everyone. This is Teresa Perkins, the editor of Exposure Spotlight Magazine. And once again, I am here and I am so excited because I have Excelsior Jiu Jitsu here with the family, Christian on base family uh, training center. I mean, this is just so exciting because I have Nathan and Elena and Braden Lott. How are you guys doing? We're good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. Thank you. And spite of, we won't share what that is, but yes, everything, <laughs> everything is well. So I am so excited to have you guys here. And thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Okay. But I want to start here and just kind of tell everyone a little bit about the training center, which is basically it is to defend, to help people to defend themselves in a real life situation. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is the a hands-on um, where someone's coming at you. Uh, they could grab you, throw punches at you, try to tackle you from different angles, different positions. And Jiu-Jitsu teaches you how to defend yourself in every situation you can possibly think of. Okay. Well, look, if you don't mind, I would like for each one to actually um, to introduce, them, introduce themselves and share with how did you, how did you get started? Uh, with doing uh, jujitsu. Okay, Elena, you want to start? Sure. So, hi, my name is Elena. I'm 18 years old. Um, so, some would consider me a gym brat. <laughs> um, I've been to the gym since I was four years old. Um, it's pretty much been on and off my entire life. It wasn't until I was, what, 13, 12 or 13, mm -hmm. where I really started putting in a lot of effort and training pretty consistently. Um, but yeah, I've been in the gym pretty much my whole life and something I just do now. Right. Okay, and how about you, Brayden? Okay, my name's Brayden, um, I'm 17. Uh, I've been training for, since I was four now, and um, now I pretty much just stay at the gym all day, like a second <laughs> home. Um, and I took off about one year for high school sports, and I learned that I like to just do a lot better than high school sports, so I stay here and this is all I do. Right. And I'm Nathan, of course. I'm the I'm the head instructor uh, of the Zachary Gym. I've uh, been involved in martial arts since I was a little kid, around six years old. And I started training jiu-jitsu around 2006. And this is a, pretty much all I've done since then. I also um, pastor and have pastored a couple of churches and work in uh, that field as well. But uh, I'd say probably 80% of my time is spent here at the gym um, training. Wow. So here we have a pastor that also knows how to defend himself. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, that is awesome. Now, if you don't mind, just kind of share with everyone a little bit more about the training center and how they can get involved. Okay. Um, so one thing, uh, and, and we had kind of talked about, um, is uh, you can go on and watch some of our videos to, to get an idea of what it looks like. You can go on to our Facebook pages, Excelsior Jiu-Jitsu, Excelsior Denim is one that we have. We have Instagram pages as well, and you can watch some of the videos. Um, us specifically at our Zachary location, we're getting ready to open a gym in Denim Springs, and we have affiliates who are all over uh, who are part of our family. Uh, you could just find one of our gyms on ExcelsiorBJJ.com. Um, um, and, and there you can look and usually we recommend just going in and finding one, uh, that's close to you and going in and watching a class, meeting the team, making sure that there's compatibility there, that you get along and that they're the right fit for you and then get on the mats and just try a class. We recommend that for everyone. Okay. Is there a certain age category? Um, here in Zachary, we usually like to start, uh, the minimum age is five. We, we, you know, sometimes, uh, there have been five-year-olds that we turn away just because we don't feel like they're, uh, they're learning. And I don't like, I don't like the idea of a parent wasting their money, uh, by bringing a child if the child's not going to be able to, to retain the information. Um, so usually five, most of our students though, we have a big kids program. But most of our students are adults. And so, um, it, it's kind of a, you know, a little bit different than what you're used to in the traditional sense of. What people think about when they think about karate, jiu-jitsu is very different because you have, you know, a, a huge number of adults to train. Okay. Now, Elena and Brayden, they teach us the kids. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. These two teach most of the kids' classes, and uh, they do an incredible job with it. Um, they, it's really awesome to go. We go to tournaments, and we get to see them coach. 
and um, they here at the here at the gym. They they have different coaching styles. Elaine is very energetic and teaches a very uh, one style really. And Braden is a very let's get this done, <laughs> let's work as hard as we can, uh, different style. And so, they, so yeah, so they get, <laughs> the kids here get to learn um, really from a couple of different perspectives, and they do a, they do a wonderful job. Okay, so Braden, let me uh, ask you this question: When it comes to teaching kids. Uh, as far as defending themselves, of course, you know, in school, a lot of them are being bullied. Uh, what type of technique do you usually uh, would give to someone, um, you know, a child that would be able to defend themselves if they're caught in a situation like that? Um, the main thing is um, distance control, and that's uh, trying to get away from the attacker or bully as fast as possible. Or um, another way is to get close. And we usually say, like, if the kid is um, getting bullied or attacked by someone who, they, like, is a lot bigger than them, we would recommend them to get away. And even if it's a situation where they're not bigger, you should still try to get away because we never want to hurt anybody. So we would want them to get away. But if it gets to this point, like, you get backed up in a corner or something, you would want to get as close as you can um, to keep the, the punches and uh, stuff with less power, of course. And... Um, for example, we use hip escapes just in case you fall down, and that's just getting your hips moving to where you can get away from the person. Uh, we use uh, breaking grips that we teach for self-defense a lot, um, so you can get your hands away just in case they ever get trapped. You can get your hands away and run away or whatever you really need to do to escape the situation. Okay, great. Now, um, since we're on the subject of that, I would like to talk a little bit about um, the recent, um, you, know, you can say, police brutality that took place with George Floyd. Yes, Nathan, if you don't mind, um, just kind of share with me or the audience, if you don't mind, uh, in reference to if someone is caught in a situation such as having a chokehold on them, uh, what type of advice could you possibly give in reference to that? Yeah, so, so first let me say this, uh, um, the, the situation with, with George Floyd was, was very difficult. It was very difficult to watch, should have never happened. Right. Um, uh, and so it goes back to the officers that were arresting. I really believe their training was poor. Um, that should have never, the way they handled it, the way they were holding him down should have never taken place. Uh, there's different ways to do that. Um, so one thing we do, you know, we, we tell people all the time uh, is that if you are constantly in a situation like in our gym, if you're constantly in a place where people are practicing chokes and arm locks and takedowns and things on you, you slowly start to develop a sensitivity to that. You understand, I don't, we don't want to lock, we don't want to choke anyone. We don't want to lock arm locks on anyone. We don't want to throw anyone to the ground in a real life situation. Uh, because we understand how, how delicate the human body is and how they can be hurt. So we, we train so much, so we never have to do that. Um, you know, if someone was in a situation, of course, you know, very openly, if there's a, if, you know, if, if someone's attacking you, uh, there are techniques in jujitsu that teach you, teach you how to escape chokes, how to escape, you know, different arm locks and things like that to keep you safe. But the idea is always safety, never aggression. Mm -hmm. We never punch, we never kick, we never, we never start fights. We never look for things like that. And we talk about it all the time in our gym. We're constantly looking for a way out of fighting. We train to fight, so we never have to fight. Wow. I like that. That's pretty much a motto, you know. We train to fight to never have to fight. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, so in, in, a, in a situation like that, um, I mean, so would you say that more police officers need to um, take uh, – you know, training and rough, you know, to learn more, to do it correctly? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so, so one of the, that's one of the biggest problems. I'm a big advocate that I believe police officers all across the nation should have to learn uh, at least train in jujitsu for at least a year or two. Um, we say this a lot. The, the common curriculum for police officers is just, you know, uh, you know, four to eight hours of training per year. And, and, and not being, you know, not only this sounds silly, but this is the reality. Uh, Braden, myself, and Elena usually train three to four hours a day. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a lot of training to get, to get in a position or to get, uh, obtain the knowledge that you can control someone without hurting them. 
and, and to build the cardio to be able to do that. If you don't have the skills uh, necessary and the fluidity and the cardio to, to control another person when they're attacking you, you're always going to rely on an animalistic instinct. You're always going to use aggression and weapons and violence, which is the exact opposite of what we teach. And so um, I think that's what you're seeing. You're seeing a lot of police officers who just are not properly trained. And so what happens is they just rely on aggression and violence, which mm -hmm. is the wrong thing. Now, most police officers, let me, let me back that up by saying most police officers that I know um, um, are incredible people who are underpaid and undertrained. And that's, that's some things that we really need to focus on. Hopefully we focus on as a nation of, of getting those things better, better training for our officers. All right, so are you training any officers? Yes, ma'am. We, we have several that train with us, really great men and women, um, uh, really some pretty, pretty high level, um, high level competitors as well, uh, who are police officers and there are police officers I know who train at gyms all the way from California, Florida and Idaho and all over Louisiana and Mississippi and um, just incredible, incredible people who, who are very active in the sport. Um, and, and, and so the ones that train here, are, are very open about the fact that they're training because they just want to get better. Ultimately, a police officer wants to go home at the end of the night without having to hurt anybody. And so that's, you know, that's what most police officers that I know uh, that, that train in jiu-jitsu do. And it just creates a different mindset um, as they're training here with us. Okay. Now tell me a little bit more about Professor Matt Baker. Uh, Professor Matt Baker. I don't know how much we can say about uh, Professor Matt. I first met Matt when he beat me up at a tournament. Um, oh, okay. we, were, we were at a tournament. He uh, he beats me up and then tells me how good I'm doing and that he wants to hang out later. Um, <laughs> so uh, he is one of the sweetest men, but one of the highest level jujitsu practitioners that I've had the honor of meeting. Um, we're affiliated with them. We're actually part of the Trujitsu team. Trujitsu is the, the logo that's on both of their shirts. Um, Excelsior is under Trujitsu. Um, we're under them because their jujitsu is Professor Matt's jujitsu skill is at the highest level. But more than that, um, he represents everything that I think is good about the sport. He's a great person. He uh, he teaches to improve the lives of others, and he is constantly preaching, um, you know, a good message of positivity and and just man, just a great family, a great environment that he's. Uh, that he's created over there. He's in Bakersfield, California, and has affiliates all in that, all over that area. Okay, so um, so you guys are located in Zachary, correct? And yes, now you op you open up a, a facility in Denham Springs as well, right? Yes, ma'am. Our primary location right Louisiana, now is in Zachary. Yes, <laughs> yes yeah, Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. So our primary uh, location is in Zachary, Louisiana, and we're going to you know continue to grow and to build this gym. Uh, we get calls all the time from the Denham Springs area, which is actually where we live. And so uh, we decided to go ahead and open a, a gym there. Uh, it should be open in mid to late August is our goal um, for that location. And, and uh, we're just going to take off, kind of take off from there. Okay. And are you accepting new students at the present time? Yes, ma'am, we are. Um, most, uh, most gyms, fitness gyms, martial arts schools, and jujitsu clubs all over the United States kind of suffered a, a little bit of hit with quarantine with the, with the lockdown that we had, uh, but we're in the process of, of rebuilding and um, our classes are still pretty good, uh, still pretty full, but we're accepting new students in all of our classes, adults, teens, and the kids' classes. Uh, kickboxing and yoga as well. And then of course, when Denim opens, we'll, we'll have open enrollment there. Actually, enrollment's available right now for our Denim Springs location. So how can everyone reach you if they're interested in enrolling? Uh, there's several there's several ways uh one is our social media pages elena actually manages most of those for us so elena the the names of all of those excelsior jiu-jitsu is going to be us and zachary and excelsior denim excelsior denim and that's facebook and instagram uh okay. you can pull that up and then we have a, our website is excelsiorbjj.com uh, and that also lists not only our gyms but all of our affiliate gyms and i actually think a couple are missing off there we have affiliate gyms in opelousas and natchitoches Baton Rouge, Central, uh, Wiggins, Mississippi, Loosedale, Mississippi, and Brookhaven, Mississippi. Okay. All right. Well, look, once again, I want to say thank you all so much for accepting this invitation. But I would like to know if there's anything else that each of you would like to share with everyone that's watching 
uh, to where they can look, pick up the phone or even send an email or go to your website. Of course, we're going to place that at the end of the, um, this interview as well, where they can get your information. But is there anything at all that you all would like to share? That would be very important because today, I would like to add before uh, allowing you guys to do that, that there is so much that is happening in this world today where, uh, you know, it's just full of uh, violence. And I, I really truly believe that more women and men, boys and girls need to reach out to you all in some shape, form or fashion because today we need to find a way besides picking up a gun to be able right. to defend ourselves in, 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 you know, in whatever area that it may take because we don't know how someone may approach us. Um, and I say us because I can be one of those people, but Lord forbid, I hope that never happens. But at the same time, I think this is a great thing that you all are doing, especially when you said that you're learning to fight, not to fight. I mean, that is awesome. How many people, you know, really have that type of mindset? Not very many people. And I think that is awesome. But it sounds like, too, and I think I mentioned this before, that you need some type of strength. Sometimes I can find myself, I can barely pick up a brick. But from my understanding, Elena can pick up a, a 210 pound or more person or was that a 12 year old girl that's one, <laughs> one of these students that may have yeah, done Elena, that? You, Elena, you could, you could speak to that about the technical aspect and how it's more important. Right, so I think that's really important, especially for women. And uh, we have this thing in Jiu-Jitsu like, grow like a woman or a small man. Um, so that kind of thing. So I think it's really important to, uh, that's why I really enjoy Jiu-Jitsu and I really think it's important for women to try just because it's not about how fast you go, it's not about, you know, what you do outside of the gym. It's like your work that you put in here is going to show. Um, and I think that regardless of how small or how big you are, if you learn how to play the game and when to move and how to move, um, you know, it doesn't matter. You're going to, you're going to come out on top in the end. I would, I would say so. Brayden? <laughs> Brayden's the talking of one of the family. Um, yeah. So the, the jujitsu system that, Professor Matt has has put in place that there, there's a couple of different thoughts in jiu-jitsu. One is a power game, um, which is which relies a lot on strength and athleticism. And the system that we're learning from uh, from Professor Matt is really more of a technical science-based game. Um, I, and and I, I and he'll correct me later if I say this wrong, but he was a purple belt when he had a neck injury. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he always tells people he had to choose to either quit training jiu-jitsu or to get smart. And so he developed a system that really, if you learn it, anyone can do. It just takes time. Um, it takes it takes a little time to understand the concepts and to put yourself in a position where the person attacking you just can't hurt you. That's the goal is to put them in a place where they can't fight anymore. And so really, it's uh, it, you know, that's, that's kind of the idea on both of their shirts. It says technically superior. It's not them as individuals. It's the system that is technically superior. Okay. Um, one more thing I would say, if you're even, if you're watching this and you're even thinking about trying jujitsu, I would say give it a try, you know, um, regardless if you love it or hate it, it's going to teach you something either way. So um, I would say use this as your motivation and go ahead to, you know, find somewhere that you might fit in and try it. Or do your research first. Do your research. Yeah, Google's your friend. Yeah, what she means by that is before you go anywhere, uh, type in the instructor's name on Google and uh, type in jujitsu and make sure that they have a long competition history. Be sure that they're out there. They've been training for a long time. They're legitimately ranked. Um, people who say they teach jujitsu but really don't have never trained it or could get people hurt. And so the idea is to train with certified, really high level qualified instructors. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, allow me to ask you this. Is there certain levels like it is like with karate? You have black belt, white, blue, red, or I think, I know for sure, black. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But is there such thing as that with, um, you know? Y yes, yes, ma'am. We have a belt system that really, we don't put a lot of focus on it. Um, like there's no, in jujitsu, there's no belt testing or things like that. It really just kind of tracks your progress over time. Um, you get those promotions in class when you've earned them. As far as, uh, you know, being able to perform the techniques in a real live situation when someone's coming at you. Um, uh, it, which takes years of learning and proficiency. There's also age requirements in jiu-jitsu. You'll never see a seven-year-old walking around with a black belt. 
you actually have to be 16 years old to even get into the adult belt system. And so uh, Braden, he's been training since he was four. And at 17 years old, he's a blue belt, where if he would have been in a karate school somewhere, he'd be like an eighth degree black belt by now. Um, you know, that's just not the way that it works in jiu-jitsu. We don't put that emphasis on a belt. There's an old saying in jiu-jitsu that uh, the belt only holds your pants up. Um, hmm. So you need to be able to really worry about the rest of you. Mm-hmm. And so our focus is always being technical and getting better each day, not on a belt. If your focus is on a belt, you're really looking to the wrong thing. Okay. Well, once again, I greatly appreciate you all uh, for accepting this invitation. And um, we look forward to, uh, I know myself, uh, of course, you know, really promoting and marketing um, you guys as far as giving people the information that is looking to to get into a training center such as this. And I think this is really awesome what you're doing. And I definitely commend you because not only that, you're Christian based and a family as well. So family it's working family. together. And the Bible says what? where there's unity there's strength and i definitely definitely can see that through through you all and i greatly appreciate you once again and is there anything else that you would like to share before we end um no i would just tell you to go on and uh maybe go to our website excelsiorbjj.com or go to um professor matt's website on jujitsu and uh just check it out and um and we would love we would love to have you come by and just visit you don't have to get on the mat you can just come by and see us just come hang out with us, ask questions, watch a class, and we would love to meet anyone that, uh, that's interested and answer any questions that they may have. All right. Well, thank you again, and you guys have a great day, and God bless you, all right? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.